aware. It is Mental Health Awareness Week, and as such, we'll be seeing a huge amount of coverage at trying to highlight the support that is available to all of us. Over in the United States, one former music producer has taken a somewhat different approach when it comes to highlighting issues around mental illness. Shanti Das speaks to some of the biggest stars in US music and sport about their experiences. Here's a little excerpt from our conversation with Ludacris. You know, FaceTimes and things of that nature, they're so important right now because meaningful relationships is probably the most important thing that's going to keep you sane and keep you in a positive attitude right now. So I'm telling Shanti on live right now, if you need to call me tomorrow, you need to FaceTime me, you better do it because I'm going to uplift your spirits. I'm going to talk the same way I'm talking to you right now. We're going to get through tomorrow. And Shanti Das joins us now from Atlanta. Shanti, it is really good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being with us. Um, just looking at your, your conversation with Ludacris there, I mean, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen an interview with him which hasn't put a smile on, on my face, but, but just tell me a little bit about, about the struggles that he and some of your other guests have had, because one has to say, when you're thinking about problems around mental health, you don't immediately think to stars of stage, screen, and the, the world of sport. Absolutely. Good morning, Neil. Uh, you know, it's interesting what I'm finding is so many of the celebrities that I'm talking to, they're human, just like all of us. And I think one thing that we've all learned through this quarantine is everybody's level of anxiety right now has been heightened. I think it's also um, having, uh, giving us an opportunity to really look deep within ourselves and figure out what's important. So whether I was talking to Estelle or Ludacris or D-Nice or Common or Swiss Beats, you know, they're all trying to find healthy ways to cope, um, to relieve some of the stress, and to really pro uh, focus on family and self-care right now. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about the transition you had yourself, Shanti, from, from working within the music industry to, to starting your organization at Silence the Shame. Yeah, so I used to be head of marketing for Universal Motown, but my father took his own life when I was seven months old. In 2014, my best friend took her own life. And then in 2015, Neil, I came really close to taking my own life. So it was a result of me getting the help that I needed, seeing my psychiatrist, doing the work, and really opening up and sharing to be vulnerable and transparent about my own challenges with mental health. And that led me to start the Silence to Shame Incorporated Foundation. Um, well, we certainly all need to be a little bit more open sometimes about what we're going through. And at no other time, perhaps, more obviously than as we're all living through this this COVID-19 um, pandemic. I mean, how is it affecting kind of the, the, the mental health of, of you, your friends, the, the people of America, in fact? Uh, I think the main thing is people are, again, just feeling really anxious. Uh, I, for one, live by myself, so the isolation can be debilitating at times. I'm trying to make sure I keep a regular schedule. I get up and I take breaks. I take walks. I'm also providing myself some grace when I am feeling the anxiety. So being able to, like, recognize my feelings, acknowledge them, and process through them, I think, is the, is the most important thing right now. I understand from, from, from some of the work that you've done that there are mental health problems within the African-American population, within the black American population, that perhaps are exacerbated for some reason. Why are uh, black American teenagers so much more likely than, than, than white American teenagers to take their own lives? I think the stigma, for one, in our community is still a really big factor. Um, you know, we don't want to feel like we're quote-unquote crazy or we feel embarrassed sometimes in our communities when, we open, when we're open and we speak up and talk about our mental health. So that's the work that we're trying to do with Silence to Shame is really erase the stigma, particularly in our communities of color, so that our teenagers, you know, will be more open to sharing. You know, we're really trying to normalize the conversation around that population. Um, and, of course... If people are looking at interviews with, I mean, I'm just listing some of the names that you've, you've spoken to, Common, you know, T-Boys, Ludacris, Chuck D, of all people. If they're looking at individuals like that and they are being opening, I mean, are you discovering that people are, are responding by being more open themselves? Oh, my gosh, yes. People are, like, sending me DMs and private messages saying, thank you so much for creating the Yale Wellness Platform. If, you know, I look at my uh, entertainers, you know, and I see that they're experiencing the same thing, then it's giving me that courage and that confidence to get the help that I needed. Uh, well, Shanti, we wish you very well with the campaign. You've been doing some fantastic work. I'm very jealous about the interviews you've got. <laughs> uh, really good to see you this morning. Thanks for being with us. 
Good to see you too, and thank you. I'll be talking to Sony Music UK during the webinar today. So cheers to Sony Music UK. Not a problem. You take care. Bye.